Welcome back. OK, so these email examples, um, you will be able to download these. And these are just some, some nice examples of situations. So I'm not going to read each one of them, uh, but as if you just look at the top, you'll see the subject. So, for example, following up after asking someone to do something and no response. OK, so this is probably one of the most common questions I get. How can you politely ask someone to do something when you've heard nothing at all? Um, here, yeah, as you can see, I've used I hope that you are well began with a, a nice pleasantry and yeah I've, i was just wondering if you've had a chance to so again quite a nice way of saying have you done this yet <laughs> without saying it that way and then give them the benefit as soon as i receive then what you need then i can and then the benefit to them is what you would put there the next step and benefit that they care about um, now, I like this sentence. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you would like any more details. Um, so it's basically saying, you know, if how can I sort of help you to help me to get this done as soon as possible? Um, and then I look forward to hearing for, from you and then kindest regards. So it's sort of semi urgent without being too, too forceful or adding too much pressure. So that's example one. Now, uh, example two is requesting information for a project. OK, so this is specifically projects or plans. Um, again, the I hope you are well. I'm writing in reference to then the project name and then you're asking for a, a status update. And yeah, you'll notice it's very polite. If you could please provide us with a status uh, update for and then you give the exact details of what you're requesting. Could you also please confirm? Now, this is where I would use a numbered list. So, yeah, please confirm colon and then one, two, three, four, whatever, whatever it is that you need. Main reason for this is so that then you can always go back and say regarding my email dated at this time, number one or point two. Uh, and you can actually refer directly to that exact point within the email. Many thanks in advance for dealing with this as a matter of urgency. That's another good sentence there. So you're thanking them in advance for doing it quickly for you. And then, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Kindest regards and your name. So that's requesting information for a project. Now, if you're giving advice, this is slightly different. Again, I hope you're well. And then, um, yeah, I refer, refer to your email regarding describing the issues that you've been experiencing. So this is like customer service, a, a sort of customer service response uh, that you could use it for. And then, so yeah, you're, you've, you've mentioned the issues, then you're clarifying the main issues. Remember, don't use problems, use issues, it's much better. And then firstly, secondly, third, um, then if you want to, you can actually give sort of reasons and solutions one by one. Um, it's up to you whether you want to do the, you know, the issue and then the solution issue, then solution or list the issues and then list the solutions. It's up to you. I typically prefer to list all the issues and then underneath list all the solutions like issues, solutions. Uh, it's neater, but it's up to you. Um, I hope the advice above will help you resolve the issues. If you require any further assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us again. So very nice, very clean, very concise. OK, so example four, following up after a meeting or call to move to next steps in doing business together. OK, so this first email uh, or the first line, I hope this email finds you well. That's, um, yeah, another great sort of opening line to use. This this email is, for example, if you had a, a meeting or if you went to a, a conference, had a presentation, had a call and you're following up. OK, so the first line, it was a pleasure meeting you and discussing and then something they care about. 
This is just to refresh their memory, to take them back to that time previously. Um, so yeah, try and give something. Maybe they maybe they mentioned something to you that they really enjoyed and, and you liked it as well. So you're sort of refreshing their memory um, to make them think, oh, yeah, it's that guy. I remember him. Um, I'm in the process of preparing project or deal that you're working on so that you or we can then the benefit that they want, obviously, as always. Um, I've attached a form for you to kindly complete with your basic information. If you could please, and then list the steps involved. If you could please get this back to me by day and time um, so we can, and then again, the benefit to them, it'll make them do it quicker. I look forward to hearing from you, kindest regards. Okay, so yeah, a couple of different format emails for you there. Uh, I hope they're useful. Okay, so a little bit of a quiz here. You can see uh, in the yellow box, these are the details that need to be put into the email. I'm going to read through it slowly. Try and fill in the words as I'm going through. If you need to pause, please do. Um, but yeah, good luck. Okay, so dear IT department, I hope that you had a great weekend. I'm writing in connection to the meeting arranged for Wednesday the 21st. I'm emailing in advance to let you know that the new CEO is penciled in to attend. I regret to inform you that I personally can't attend. However, I have provided information on the attachment regarding the project plan. If you need further information, please don't hesitate to contact me. I look forward to hearing the results of the meeting. Kind regards, Jason. Good. I hope you got most of those correct. Um, if not, yeah, please try it again. And um, and if you if you did get any mistakes, then maybe try it again also in a few days um, just to. Yeah, just to get used to throwing in these words in the correct places. OK, great. Next slide. Now we're moving on to some English grammar. So these are a common sort of grammatical mistakes and things to be aware of just to ensure that your grammar is good. Again, coming back to that credibility. OK, so English grammar. Here we go. Now, these can be tricky, um, countable and uncountable nouns. So, yeah. Um, the, the main part, if you look at this image on the left or this infographic, this is uh, it, it's a useful uh, way of remembering countable and uncountable nouns. To be honest, the top, the green and the and the red or the green and the pink are very self-explanatory. The best part, the part I really like is the purple box because it, it sort of explains why uncountable nouns are what they are. Um, so, for example, abstract ideas, things you can't touch like love, freedom, education, luck. These are usually uncountable. Anything that you cannot physically touch um, can often be uncountable. Um, if it's made up of really tiny pieces like sugar, rice, salt, sand, flour, things that you can't count with your naked eye are usually uncountable. Some food um that sort of it, it's sort of cut into smaller parts for example bread fish cheese chocolate meat bacon um so yeah it's uh, these typically you sort of tend to have to memorize if you have uh you know pieces of cheese that can be sort of small pieces any size of of, of of cheese itself but if you've you, you could have mountains of cheese and it would still be cheese so yeah it's usually food that is in smaller pieces that's the uncountable version of the noun liquids and gases you can't physically count them again you know with your naked eye you can't count how many sort of molecules of water there are so it's uncountable 
Uh, raw materials, typically like wood, glass, paper, gold, silver, they're, they're typically us they're usually uh, uncountable. But be careful. Um, now, these ones are, are the ones that often people get wrong. Furniture, advice, work, news, information, luggage and money. Um, yeah, these ones do. There are they are commonly um, incorrect, especially furnitures. I'm not sure what an advice is. People often say furnitures and advice is. So please do be careful of those. Um, I know uh, a, a lot of my students will print this off and they'll sort of have it stuck somewhere. Um, or picture of it in their phone so they can always relate back to it. Uh, but anyway, I hope that helps. Other common uh, common uncountable nouns that are mistakenly used as countable, attention, help, caution, evidence, confidence, research, confusion, and support. Um, and yeah, so do be careful. Yeah, it's not a lot of attentions have been paid. It's a lot of attention different evidences this is a really common one no matter how many pieces of evidence there are it's always just evidence and um yeah so i'll let you read through these anyway in your own time okay now how to use uncountable nouns this is extremely important many versus much okay so many is used with countable much is used with uncountable so it's not many evidences have been found it's much evidence has been found much because evidence is uncountable now when it comes to uh like numbers and amounts number refers to how many of something there is amount refers to how much of something there is so again number is for countable like a number of people you can count the people um have made a large amount of money okay so money is uncountable therefore it's amount so yeah try and remember that many a number go together much an amount go together okay hopefully that's a good rule of thumb that will help you in the future now this is something that will hopefully help you if you have difficulty remembering whether to use in, on, or at. Uh, again, this is something that my students often print off. Um, so on the left, we have time at the large end of the, of the upside down triangle. And then at the bottom, you have the smaller end of the triangle, the smaller point. Okay, and, and it's like that for a reason. Let's look at the top one first. Uh, sorry, the left side first, time. So we're starting at the top. So if you have a large amount of time, for example, centuries, decades, years, months, or weeks, it's always in, okay? So two weeks and above, it would be in, in two weeks, in three months, in three years, in two decades, or in the 1900s, etc. Now, if it is um, a day, even if it's like a birthday or a day of the week, yeah, it's on. So yeah, on May the 5th, on my birthday, on Friday, on Christmas day. Um, you could even have on the weekend. Um, also people do use at the weekend though. So it can sort of be both that one. But typically anything that is um, smaller than a day, uh, you would have, you would use at, for example, at 7 a.m., at 12 o'clock, at 5 p.m. So as the triangle gets smaller, you move from in on to at. Same with location. If you have a big location like a country or a city or a neighborhood, like in England, in London, in Chinatown, because it's larger. But if it's a street, if it's a street or smaller, then it's on, you know, on Oxford Street, on Carnaby Street. Um, yeah, so it's the name of the street. It would be on the street, on the road. Now, if it's smaller than the road itself, it's the address. So it would be at the address, at 734 Oxford Street, at the store, at Starbucks, for example. Um, so it's at the location. Now, a lot of people ask me, the diff why isn't it, you know, like, what's the difference between at the airport and in the airport? 
it's a location, but people use in for the airport. Now, the reason for that is because at the airport means at the location of the airport. If I say I'll meet you at the, the airport, it means I'll meet you at the location of the airport. If um, I say I'll meet you in the airport, that means I'll meet you inside the airport. OK, so it's not actually a location. It's in the building. Um, so that's the difference there. For example, if I say I'll meet you at the office, it means I'll meet you at the office location. If I say I'll meet you in the office, this in means inside. Yeah, that's an easier way to explain it. Inside the airport, inside the office inside the coffee shop so that in is actually inside okay i hope that clarifies that okay now a common um some misuse of prepositions i will see you at monday it should be i'll see you on monday but often people shorten it to i'll see you monday same thing as i'll see you on monday just more, it's more verbal, more more uh, sort of spoken term. Let's meet on five o'clock should be let's meet at five o'clock. I'm working in a big project. This is something that I see very often. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be in a big project. You can work in a big team. Again, it means like inside a big team, but it should actually be I'm working on a big project. And the last one, it depends of the situation. It should be, it depends on the situation. Okay, great. Now, um, this is, an, again, a very common one. Um, attached versus enclosed. Now, the easiest way to explain this is that any anything that is sort of inside something else when it is being sent, is enclosed for example if you put money in a christmas card uh, or a birthday card that is enclosed it, it's sort of put inside something and then sent physically if you are attaching uh, a document however many documents to an email it is always attached so please find the template agreement attached to this email OK, so letters or anything that are sent by post or courier are enclosed. Anything digital is attached. Kindly. Um, now, this is something that I frequently get asked also um, how to use kindly. Now, the, the best way to explain it is, for example, if I say I kindly request you to provide more information, what that actually means is I'm being kind by requesting that you give me more information. OK, so this is a lot of people do do this and it's incorrect. The way it should be is the other way around. Um, kindly provide more information, which is them being kind by sending it to me. OK, so the best way to remember it is don't follow the word kindly. Uh, sorry, don't follow the word I by kindly. OK, so make sure there's no I behind before kindly. Um, kindly should come first. Kindly provide more information. If you want to use I, then use something humble like I humbly request that you provide more information. So you don't show kindness by requesting something. It's the other person who shows kindness by providing something to you. OK, now approval. Uh, last one here. Yeah, you, you don't ask for someone's approval. You request or you seek their approval or you would like their approval, but you don't actually ask for their approval. Um, you're, you seek it or you would like it. OK. Another couple of errors here, e.g. versus i.e. OK, now um, e.g means for example ie is that is or by which i mean or in other words so eg is basically example if you uh say for example i'm having a uh, a dinner party and i have a chef and i would like my chef to uh to cater for some vegetarians who will be attending okay so i could say um, certain members of my family, e.g., mum and uncle, uh, 
e.g. mum and uncle Jake are vegetarians, that means that there could be more vegetarians, but mum and uncle Jake are also vegetarians. They're, they're just some of the vegetarians in the room. OK, it's an example. It doesn't mean it's all of them. But if I said, i.e. mum and uncle Jake, that would mean that mum and uncle Jake are the only vegetarians that are coming to the dinner party. OK, so e.g. is an example. I.e. is by which I mean. Um, and that's the difference. People tend to use them interchangeably and, you know, often it just gets overlooked. Uh, but that is the, the, the correct way to use e.g. and i.e. Problem versus question. Um, yeah, be, be careful. I mentioned earlier, try and remove the word problem if you're emailing people. Um, so, yeah, it's got a negative connotation to it. It's better to replace it with issue or question or query or challenge. Uh, well, if it's if it's problem, then issue or challenge is better. Um, yeah, question. I tend to use query. I quite like to use query. Uh, or inquiries. So rather than saying if you have any problems, you could say if you have any questions or if you have any queries or if you have any inquiries. It's also great as well. OK, so, um, yeah, I hope that this has been a, a useful course for you. It's, it's been fun for me uh, making it and putting it together for you. Um, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please do get in touch. Uh, as mentioned, I, I will I will get back to you. Um, I'll reply to any questions, comments or feedback that I receive. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you so much uh, for joining and for taking interest in the course. And I wish you all the very best for the future. And uh, please do feel free to join any of my other courses at any time. All the best. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.